second Sand King, so it's a four Sand King. And that's going to be a uh, three Marana, I'm guessing, or three Dragonite. Uh, hmm. Yeah, boxy. Boxy on the Marana. Yeah, three Marana. You see the shard, do you think, on the Marana? Probably later in the game. Yeah, I mean, that's, there's an egg hitter. They can kill egg easily. They can do, they have two stun setups with Dragonite and Sand King, so that's how they're going to land arrows. And all of a sudden, it makes those like stun initiators feel a lot better because of the fact that they're going to be able to follow it up with an arrow. So um, if they can get those combos to work, it could be really good. All right, we're going to see if we get those combos to work. Thank you so much for joining us for the draft purge. Kyle, 10 heroes on the board. Who's going to take the first game with the best uh, of three? I got to say, I like I like what Kuro's cooked up. I think that they have answers. They've got better team fight. I'm not sold on Marana offlane, especially it's a Bloodseeker Axe Puck Coil. Like, it's just a tough game. There's a Void Spirit you got to worry about, too. It just feels like they may have the answers, but it's, you know, it's like when you, you never know, but they'll need to execute a lot of kills in like this sort of simplistic skirmish style, like, mm -hmm. ha, arrow. Ab follow up. Okay, we'll get a tower now, and they need to be real cautious about their team fight. Bristol has to be top net worth entire game. Take the win. How about you, Mark? Uh, yeah, I'm liking what Nigma's got going on. I love the idea because again, we saw in the earlier series the Phoenix just had nothing to protect the egg. In this case, we've got stuff to protect the egg, and it feels like they they really knew what they wanted to do with this draft. Whereas I felt Liquid was a little bit more like, okay, um, we need to find something now, and I guess this solves our problem. So I go with Nigma. All right, let's find out what's going to happen then in this opening a series, not opening series, opening game of the series. Uh, we have for commentary duo OD Pixel and BSJ. Thank you very much, Chief. Yeah, this should be a, a fun one for sure. Nigma up against Liquid. Brian, we, we've had the drafts. Uh, quite a lot to talk about. Uh, what, what are you most excited to see here? I'm excited for the carry bristle. Uh, this is a hero that I kind of theory crafted with the Eternal Shroud. I'm curious if you go in on carry because the off lane bristle, it seems pretty obvious that that utility plus tankiness would be nice. But is he going to go more like the S and Y? Is he going to go more like the damage route? But I like this off lane Marana for specifically Liquid, because if it was any other team, uh, I feel like I would be concerned for the same reasons Kyle is, but what they tend to do is they'll swap up like the roles of the Sand King and the Murano, where the Sand King becomes more of the three and the Murano is just for the egg, just I think later on, but here we go. Oh my goodness, yeah, we have a full five on five here, really, with Tiger starting things off with a Barrow Strike. Lumbrite's gonna be down, Stylus in the Sand King, who's gonna get the kill first? Tiger's getting low to the battle hunger, Nigma's running him down, but it's gonna be Liquid to get first, but taking down Mind Control, they do lose Tiger in return, as it's a one for one, they're gonna be able to get a second. Liquid, as they'll also finish off Kuro with the stacks and the quills. It's, uh, two kills for Liquid, just the one hit for Nigma, but uh, yeah, both teams already ready to brawl. And I, I think we're going to see a lot of that this game, right, Brian? Both teams are going to want to be bringing the fight. Yeah, there is non-stop fight from uh, Ball these here. So much damage, so much control on both sides, and uh, yeah, I think that's only a small sample of what's to come. Yeah, as both take a read of one another uh but but as you say you know you said you're interested to see what mickey does with with carry bristol i mean game as a whole do you, do you think uh nigma's drafted some good solutions for the bristol uh, have they sort of you know identified the fact that it would be in in this sort of position one and and have the the relevant means to deal with it well yeah what i think teams are thinking with this puck first pick is that the best way to deal with Coil is to just stand there. And these Bristle DK heroes, I think, are meant to address that, right? But I think they're kind of ignoring the fact that GH is playing Phoenix. Percent based damage over time. Uh, if there's any hero in the game that's going to offer enough damage to bring down these strengthy tanky cores during the Coil, it is Phoenix. So we've seen GH carry the crap out of games with it in the past. And I think that he's going to be kind of the crucial factor towards it. I'm curious if they're going to try to do any synergy with the with the blood rage to amp up his damage even more but he'll probably just be using it on himself most of the game yeah for sure and having the this axe as the last bits was very nice to get that bristle facing the, the correct way so they can get the damage into the front top going in the mid lane so far quite for seven for one we are pretty trade between two down bottom arm for miracle pretty good so far here eight for four boxy getting out of this lane 
Not a lot at all, but it's, it's going to be what we, we do see Liquid doing. Uh, looks like Boxy's sort of ste taking the step back, and they're going to be letting Tiger doing the farming on this uh, bottom lens of the Sand King. So weird that they do this. <laughs> it's the only team I've seen in a long time do it. Uh, it's a lot about Tyga plays these really greedy heroes, the ones that end up being like carry or like cores in of themselves from the support role, like the Enigma. But in this case, Sand King is a very heavy farming core. He becomes more of a split pushing mobile hero. I think they're gonna have a tough time dealing with him later as well. My issue with Team Enigma's draft potentially is not necessarily that they can't bring down one of these heroes, but that they can't bring down all of them. That there's just three very, very tanky, they're all gonna build to live cores, and pretty much all of Enigma's team is predicated around killing them. Yeah, do you feel it for Liquid as well? Bottom. Getting them rather low. He's going to start running down Tiger. Tiger's Burrow Strike available for a couple of seconds. We're going to have damage in time. No Burrow Strike. He's back up. Tiger turns. But Miracle will still get the kill. Didn't quite bring down the Bloodseeker in time as Miracle is out to the side. Maybe wants to look to try and get back in. Remnants out for Kuro. Kuro will die, but it looks like Miracle find the cleanup. Boxy with the leap salving up. Miracle trying to chase. But Boxy's got enough leap charges to get out of there. Bloodseeker hero, man. The sustain is insane. All these little skirmishes are going to come down to, like, that fine line if he gets that kill off or not, because then he gets all of his health back and lives for it. But Tyga's going to be back in lane, full HP. Void Spear will have the TP back and give him a couple salves. He does have that, so... Lane's pushing in, though. Miracle might miss a decent amount of creeps. Kuroki going to drag the creeps off the tower for his carry. Quite nice of him to do that. I don't think that death's all that bad for Tyga. Uh, Boxy ends up getting a solo XP on a kill as well. And then, uh, overall, since he's coming back full health, and basically this, this stun combo scales really well against this Bloodseeker hero, he's not going to have some natural way to survive, so Void Spirit's going to be glued down here for a while. But, uh, yeah, they just... It seems like both teams have so much threat on each other down here that it's pins and needles. That's all I'm thinking with this lane. Yeah, both sides just... Each other very low and... Yeah, but both both duos sort of having to, to really think if, you know, can we keep pushing for this kill or are they just going to be able to turn around and... It's head, so... Aggressive at the same time, Kuro, start Joe forward, Tiger. Time can sort of find that Burrow Strike into the arrow, they'll... Shot taking them down mid. Weeha, is he take the walk back to base here? Quite probably did have a ED go help him. So, great against the... Time to come out a wave or so ahead of Weeha now that Weeha has had to spend that time ahead of base. Bounty runes up, Insania is able to step in and grab it away from GH. Get Insania low, but can't really go for the aggressive. The prize is mine. Crossing. Dire structures are fortified. Insania. So far, pretty close to start across the board. Anything sort of su surprising you with the way the lanes have gone down? Is there any sort of lanes that you would, would have imagined would have begun to look a bit more one-sided? No, I'd say most of the heroes in this game are kind of about getting their own stuff, as we see a player in the mid lane. GH with the immediate TP and Kuroki with the reach around, but. Nope, uh, the arrow from Boxy is actually going to potentially save Poikva here. Will it be enough? No, he's close. No. GH able to lay down those nice last few fire spirits to secure the kill on Poikva. Now Boxy, he's committed in deep to try and help out. But he'll also lose his life there. Nice attempt with the arrow follow up onto GH, but not quite enough to kill him. And GH able to, to get out the, the dive from the spirits to make sure that the Nigma still come out on top of that defense ground mid. We are setting up finding himself a very lovely yeah that just shows a really good understanding of the matchup from team nigma because puck just usually doesn't have enough damage to stop that original dk push so that first dk form amounted to nothing and that's a crucial timing to kind of slow down because dk is a traditional counter to puck as we see in another lane i'm not gonna have much time to talk at all this game that's not that's... Uh, boxy as he arrows up on kuroki to be able to have this here kuro no further way to get out of there tiger comes in with the last punch same time, top lane. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's not, it's going to be a tough hero to take down right now. Mickey with the, the brace of the ring of health, not really a, a target that these two are going to be able to do too much about. 
I just love DK against Puck because Puck's all about that poke damage early and DK has that instant stun to deal with Puck later. As Weeha has decided I'm no longer worrying about this DK as Coil is used to kill the Coddle, but it's pretty good when you make a quick rotation like that. And Mickey might have to be a bit fearful, but that's kind of the power of Bristleback is that even without his support, he should be pretty tanky here, but instead this pure damage. They got it. Wow. Made an excellent move from Weeha, turning that you know, quick straight dream call into a keeper of the light into a kill on the carry. Now back over towards mid. Miracle's gonna come across the shot to, to set up onto Koifer with the rupture. Koifer trying to step back up with the safety of the high ground. He's not gonna be able to get away. And Weeha, he's the one to turn up to clean up the, the glory here. Triple kill for Weeha. Maybe even more boxy. It's getting very low. The urn's gonna tick him down and Weeha's gonna be able to get another. Ultra kill on the pug. I mean, Weeha could not be starting off this game any better here. 5 0 2 already for the eight minute mark. These movements are so fast from Team Nemo. This is crazy. Like, from lane to lane, I can't even keep up with it as a caster, let alone a player. This is crazy. What was Cautious how doing? to poke around, Weeha. Not going to be able to grab his hands on the room. We'll end away. Progress of Miracle going for the phase. Into the Maelstrom. And is this sort of just, this is the, the go-to build nowadays on Carry Bloodseeker Maelstrom every time? Yeah, the spell damage plus, or spell amplification plus attack speed from your Blood Rage, it, it's just too good, right? And they also buff Maelstrom so that a lot of carries are buying the item. Uh, it's just crazy that they have so many tanky cores on the side of Team Liquid. Enigma just understands that so well because they realize that they want to bring down these cores, they need three or four heroes. That's exactly what they're bringing. They're bringing ample numbers to every single fight. And I think Liquid, uh, even though they're just, like dying on these crucial cores, maybe this amount of resources required to do so is not all that bad because they're still about neck and neck. See, a bit of a repeat of what we had earlier. We are finding the opportunity to <laughs> go into the stadium with the coil. Get the kill, see if Mikkei can get anything in return. We also already got the orb up to jump away back to safety and mind control. He's been brought time to step across, grab Mikkei with the call, dunk him down as uh, Enigma just continues to do an excellent job at, at finding these kills. Pretty much every attempt that Enigma goes for in this early game to get some sort of action, especially when it's round Weeha, has just ended up in success. Liquid uh, taking some heavy hits here when it comes to the hero. Yeah, I, I really do think the setup for all this is so much about that shutting down that first DK ultimate because a lot of these movements would be stopped if DK was applying a lot of pressure on the mid tower. But Phoenix able to defend that tower alone. As I've talked for three seconds and we have another, <laughs> another engage kill. in the bottom. Yeah, Tiger is getting gone upon by Miracle. Bottom tower. Enigma just not missing a single beat when it comes to seizing any opportunity. Just go. And as soon as that kill happens, we sweep across the Weir. He's making moves already with the smoke, trying to find the jump onto Boxy. Boxy's into the trees. Talents will end in time to get him away. Use those leaps, though, to keep himself alive. Look what they found here. Do a very juicy triple stat. They're going to be able to clear this out themselves. That's also four bounties going the way of Enigma. So that's just such a well-timed move because they knew that uh, nobody on the side of Liquid would be able to get the top bounties. So by committing four heroes here, they can safely just have the axe to pick up the other two bounties. Oh, they've caught Weeha. With the stun set up and a lot of follow-up too. Boxy with the arrow, Tiger shot him with the power strike. Find the other foot and end to sort of Weeha's clean opening this game. Top lane is saying, yep. Bring Tiger across. Take this down. They've got the combo. Bow strike into the arrow. And they will drop the epicenter as well. They're going to need every bit of damage to take down Mind Control. They will. They'll get it. Yeah, there's just so many movements from both teams. The Coddle gives global presence to a lot of these immobile heroes. Didn't really think about that just now, but that is going to help a lot of the weaknesses of the Liquid Cores. Bristleback and DK can be able to farm other parts of the map if they need to be recalled to fights anyways. Kind of counteract the mobility from the Puck and the Void Spear and the Phoenix. Yeah, Dream calls back up. Look to try and pounce. This focus around mid, though, causing continued space for, for Miracle to keep farming down bottom. Okay, gold in it. Okay, still the man at the top this game on his bristle. So, level with that. 11 for 7. Fight that. The 
very, very close right now. Behind him. At uh, some of the items. Tiger, he's creep away from the blink. Big component of fight that's going to enable them to start this chain stun. Do have between the Sand King, DK, and Mirana. Certainly make Weeha's life a little bit difficult. So last time, caught up out by one stun. Pretty much done for. Not a lot that his team can do to save him if he gets an issue. Yeah, neither team really has any saves. They're all just a bunch of stuns and a bunch of damage. Uh, Mickey looks like he's going to be going for the hood immediately after the Vanguard, so he's going all about the tank. He's also got the Fairy's Trinket. I love this item on so many heroes, and on Bristleback, no different. Most of his damage coming out from the Quills, and it is considered a spell, so 5% spell amp on that's not bad at all. I wonder if he'll rush the Eternal Shroud, or if he maybe goes back for uh, kind of like the hood into another item, back into the Eternal Shroud. Well, what sort of options uh, would, would you sort of consider if you were the carry bristle, rather than, say, going all the way for the... Are you just sort of building? Why? Anything else that you can sort of get to, to help you out damage-wise? Or, or do, do you do think that he can afford to just build fully for the tank and rely on the rest of his team kills around him? I think that SNY would probably be the only reasonable item, but now that SNY no longer gives spell lifesteal amp, it used to give that, I, I think it's not as good with the the Eternal Shroud, even though that didn't used to exist, but you know, it, it used to be synergy with any hero that wanted to sustain. Uh, I think his damage items will come out later, and I also think his damage comes out of his like natural scaling, the level 20 talent. Uh, for the Quills damage, the level 25 talent for his right-click damage. I'm just, honestly, I don't think I've ever been more relieved by a pause, because I haven't had a second to catch my breath. That's so much going on. What's going on in this game? No, it's just, uh, great to see as well for, from these two teams. It, it's just something a little bit different. I feel like we've had a lot of games to today and yesterday as well, really, where you can sort of look at it from, from really the end of the draft to sort of say, well, this, is, this game's going to be very hard for this team. This game, it seems pretty even, right? Both teams, very comfortable lineups for themselves. And this opening 12 minutes, it could have been any closer. See a Marana ulti. Maybe looking to make something happen top. They have caught ultimate if they need to recall somebody else. Looks like both teams are kind of just at a stalemate here. Yeah, they're bringing the four of them up. They're not quite... Send. Blink Dagger, very close to. Tiger, of course, his is just about to deliver on the Curry. He's actually going to get gun on before he can really do anything about it. Backup's coming in, but he's been out of position by the call. Does get the Burrow strike out. The dunk's there for Mike to try to finish off the job. Liquid bringing in the numbers. There's the opening stun onto Weeha. They get the trade. Can they get more? Nick can't quite for trying to chase. Kuro still with a dissimulate left available and for the rest of his team ready to back up. GH is in the middle of it all, gets the egg off. Are they able to take it down? They're trying their best. Foxy and Mickey, they'll be able to do it. The Supernova comes to an end, but Foxy loses his life for it. Two, Mickey still fighting fit though. He's got a lot of mana, a lot of HP to work with as he runs down mind control, cleans up a third. As Liquid will be able to push back Nygma, come out on top. But they're the best attempt Nygma to really bring the fight to Liquid. Entering their jungle. And as we saw, it, it's, it is going to be a tricky game for, for GH, at least early on, to, to get these supernovas off, as Liquid will be able to do a pretty solid job of taking it down, especially if Boxy's alive. Yeah, you saw the Marana pick paying off there. He did a great job of leap dodging the axe call in order to finish off the egg. And you can tell that like he knows his purpose. He dies for it, and it's a willing sac it's a worthy sacrifice in this case, because that egg going off spell a lost team fight anytime uh, for Team Liquid. Yeah, uh, you, and you can really sort of re respect why Liquid did get it for, for, for that alone, right? You don't really sort of matter about if you've got lackings elsewhere. It, it's very much worth to draft a pick to counter GH's Phoenix because of how great of a game you're just sort of used to seeing GH have on this Phoenix multiple times, right? Probably one of the best Phoenixes, so very much worth a, a pick just to, to guarantee you can take them.
Yeah, I think what makes these drafts so even from these tier one teams whenever I watch them is that every pick has a response. You don't see an egg that doesn't get dealt with. You don't see some pushing this hero that they can't bring down. down. Yeah. You don't see tanky heroes. They don't have enough damage. It's like you, every hero has a, a solution, you know? And that means that both teams have plays that can always be made. They can always take team fights because like there's some sort of AOE combination of stuns from the Sand King, from the Phoenix and both teams have some semblance of tower pressure but in the form of nigma it's mainly the kill threat so that's why team liquid is constantly able to contest these tower pushes and the beauty of the caudal bristle combo a lot of people think of it as the mana but i'll just harp again or like reiterate the fact that the caudal being able to bring the bristle from wherever he's basically a specter in regards to where he gets to farm like it's not a matter of like you know his team fight presence but the fact that he can be farming anywhere on the map as a hero that usually struggles with mobility suddenly that's a lot of efficiency that racks itself up and even though he had a couple early deaths bristle's still number one network 15 minutes in Moonlight popped in. Be able to catch wind of Kuro's warding job. And uh, now they'll be able to take his life. He uh, done that. And now Sustania immediately able to remove that vision. Prepared. Vital information. Top lane mind control. Look, you're jumping onto Tiger. Fall off from Miracle. And we are throwing everything down onto the Sand King. The Tiger doesn't get a chance to throw anything out in return. Underneath the tower, mind control. It's going to get caught out, though. He'll be the one to lose his life in return. Can they catch anything else? They can. An attempted at TP out from Miracle. Put to a stop by the Barrow Strike. He's trying to run, but the Solar Binds just blowing him down. Miracle also pay with his life. Switch holds the defense. Tiger's buyback cures them. That setup and that catch onto Miracle. I think that's definitely a work. Yeah, it looks like he is going for the S and Y on Bristle. It is a very feels good item on the hero. And it's nice against Axe. Really the only way to deal with the call is to just make the call last less amount of time. Uh, it, it's going to allow him to be more mobile in fights. It's also going to be a good way to deal with the rupture. The stat resistance makes a lot of sense this game. As they're going to try to bring down this tanky boy. Yeah, straight in they go. And with the three of them, they got quite the damage to do so. They have it as Tiger comes in with a counter play. The Burr Strike comes down, but GH will be able to pop the Supernova. So as great as the Burr Strike is, Liquid's got to back off. Look at themselves outside of the range of the start. Mind control, he's in with the blink, catches Tiger, dragging him back over the watch. We have follow up silence. Tiger's down for a very extended duration, of course, off the back of his buyback. Boxy trying to reinitiate as he jumps forward with the setup onto mind control. The blast is there from the Illuminate. Kuro's got to get out of it. Koifa refires attempt to put the simulates into dodge it. Kuro's into the trees. Koifa still searching. The arrow, Boxy, he hits it. Bang on target. It's liquid, they may have lost Tiger, but again. Happy to bring the brawl back to Nygma. They get two kills in return. Weeha continue to poke at the side. He's got the dream coil. He's going to look to take out Insania with it, and he'll get it. He really does not like Insania. I'm pretty sure that's five out of six coils that are only on Insania. Uh, crazy part about this Bristle pick is even though it was first rounded, it seems like they have a decent amount of damage. But when I was talking about the draft, how all their heroes are about killing people, it seems like, yeah, every hero wants to kill people, but they don't have like the Slark or the OD or like the Ursa, a hero that, I guess OD not as much anymore, but the hero that capitalizes on the enemy living longer, right? Feasting on them with healing stats or doing more damage. You see that they can bring the Bristle down to like 20, 30% but they just don't quite have the finishing blow. And if they don't bring down the Bristle, that's about the Liquid's equivalent of not killing the Phoenix Eggs, right? Because he's going to have all that damage dealt to you with the Quills. He's got, he got it salved up by Insania so he could rejoin the fight. And suddenly you're seeing the power of this Bristleback and they've been stacking Ancients all game for him as well. So hero that isn't traditionally known to farm super fast, suddenly skyrocketing in net worth. And, uh... It's Dream game so far for him, despite being first round. Yeah, it really is. We see that on the stats. He's found just as much from Newton Ancients as he has from Lane. Because of this insane amount of stacking that's been going on for Liquid. And as we've come to know, just as a team throughout all of the sort of recent appearances, the second half of 2020, Liquid just by far the team that stacks the most. Liquid. Up with the Moonlight. Nigma pretty prepared though. They're all here as a five man on the high ground. He was able to find the jump on who? Weeha is going to show himself mid. Quaifa in immediately with the Dragon Tails done. They've got the first to kill him off. They do. Tiger has the follow up epicenter. They take down Weeha. 
Now they're going to look to try and get back out. Tiger with the power strike, but he's already been ruptured. Getting burnt low by the Stunray. Mind Control comes in with the Berserk School to finish him. The egg is attempted, but again, Liquid, they take it out straight away. They're also fine to clean up a miracle as Nigma. They've got to run, but Kuiper in with the big Dragon Tail catches Kuro as well. But this time, a clean team fight win for Liquid as they take four heroes down. Yeah, this is getting out of control quick. These these tanky heroes, it's all about hitting that threshold, whether or not they can burst you. And if they're being forced to now rupture a Sand King, that's kind of what I was worried about when I saw their draft, is that if they fall behind at all, there's just too many tanky guys. There's, there's not enough spells to be casted on the side of Nigma to bring these guys down. Number one weakness of Puck is sustained damage over time. Like, and this is a hero that's been getting first rounded, very considered very powerful this patch. And I think, like, it's just, it's amazing to see these top tier teams kind of just dissect a hero. It's like their entire draft is predicated around being so tanky that the damage from Puck eventually becomes underwhelming. And this is your mid hero, it's right. It's, they didn't counter some five position hero. This is a mid Puck. And they try to make up for it, I think, with the Bloodseeker Axe, a lot of like burst damage, pure damage. And it's, I see what they're going for and I really like it, but it's proving to just not quite be enough. Oh, for sure. And, and in a game where, you know, Nigma's been getting a lot done. It's not like they're suffering in the play. It's as, really, as you say, just an element of the fact that the heroes they have is not quite, just not quite able to do enough to deal with what bring at this the action we are trying to get the lincoln sphere done so he has some sort of safety against this solid initiate point for dragon tail that's the death of him times now i wonder if skipping that spirit vessel might be a massive mistake for weha here because to bring down dk and bristle mid game i think that reducing their heal over time for Bristle, since he reduces 40% of the damage, every single health that he regens is even more impactful during the middle of a fight because it represents more damage that you have to do to him. And they went for this Witch's Blade, which is a very common item we've seen on Puck, but this game, those times where Bristle barely lived, the times where DK barely lived, might not have been the case with the Spirit Vessel. So I wonder if they'll talk about that one after the game, but uh, obviously this one's not over just yet. Liquid looks like they're grouping up, ready to smoke. Showing Bristle in lane, that's the that's one of his strengths as a carry is that he can kind of just farm wherever and you never want to go on him. <laughs> Especially against a team like Liquid that's always going to have this, this sort of setup as we see Mickey. Whole team behind him. But yeah. trap mills get hurt. Top for Kuro. Tiger, finding the Burrow Strike. Kuro's got his team cancel. No. Gets away. They're going for the Burrow. McKay's going to start slowly wearing it down. Enigma, they do have the smoke and they, they, they have got the jump red. What sort of fight they can try for mind control. A little off the mark with a call. As now Tiger, he's in with the counter play, gets the power strike down onto two of them. GH going for the egg, they're trying their best to take it down to the three edge of the supernova they can. Again, taking it out, both Mike and Koikba just focus the supernova completely. GH will buy back, but now he's he's without the ultimate. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Haste. Look at Insania's inventory. He's got the shovel, he's got three salves. Mickey gets healed back up, runs right back in. We're gonna see as well an attempt for Nigma again to get the fight going. Mind control is getting low. Tiger's able to finish him, jumps him the bow strike. As it it really just seems to be what you're saying right now, Brian. You know, Nigma they're, they're sort of they're trying to do something, but it, it almost just feels impossible right now. Like they're, they're, what 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 can they do? They're they're sort of running out of options against Liquid's lineup like right now with the build-up, the itemization they have. These heroes just seem too much for Nigma to deal with. I think one of the worst feelings of Dota is playing a hero like Axe, Bloodseeker, or Puck and having a guy that just walks into you and you just like can't do anything. You're supposed like these heroes are meant to just burst somebody. They're meant to be a threat. You're supposed to be afraid of them. You're supposed to be worried about your positioning at all times against heroes like this. And Mickey, he just ran straight up the high ground, uh, you know, with no care in the world, doesn't even care if he's facing them. 
I love the Sand King pick specifically here because it offers an AoE stun that punishes them grouping up around the bristle. We saw it top earlier when they tried to burst him when it led to the four-man burrow strike. We saw it there. Just some sort of deterrent similar to the Axe Sig. Bristle is going to force everyone to group around him because if they don't hit him with four or five heroes, they're not going to kill him. And a lot of times people say, just ignore the Bristle but he's hitting for 350 damage when he's got those uh, Berserkers, or excuse me, Warpath stacks going. I mean, for, for Nygma, is there, is there any sort of, I mean, it, it, you, know, you look at the sort of Bloodstick Kikari Miracle. I mean, it, he just needs so many items, right? What, what sort of point does this Bloodseeker become a, a threat for, for the heroes of Liquid? I mean, top lane, we are is trying to push out a lane. Phase shift off, but not as well. Find him some time. He'll be he'll be able to make it away. The trees he goes. He won't die today. Yeah, Liquid's farming all three lands, though. Bristle's farming bottom, Coddle's pushing mid, and the gank top is more of a, get out of here, this is our lane. And if Coddle groups up with his team top, he can bring the Bristle with him. Mickey's doing the same thing as we just saw top bottom, but he can do it by himself because he's got the Aegis. This is all just map control. They're the sheep dogs. Nigma's the sheep. They're just trying to herd them. That's all they're trying to do. And now Nigma is stuck on their triangle. This is what I see almost every tier one team do with their ages, right? They're just gonna slowly just group you together and then eventually choke you out so that the net worth lead is gonna go up and up. If they can kill this tanking, that'd be really good. But Taiga, he's ready. Be like. He's not going to get surprised by this kind of stuff. He knows he's alone. He's the one vulnerable on his team, and he is instantly ready to react when the axe tries to jump. So much pressure coming in from Liquid now. Okay, knocking on the tier two. Enigma, I mean, they still have the four of them sat top behind Miracle in case the jump was to come in on it. Abyssal Blade done. 20, I mean, 26 minutes in, this is, yeah. This is some crazy levels of farm on Mickey's Bristle. It's all from the Coddle stacks and the mana. He doesn't have to buy any mana items, yeah. and he gets all those extra stacks. It's so nice for Bristle. One of his biggest weaknesses is having to buy so many region items to actually use his quills off cooldown. But that's just not the case with Keeper of the Light. Oh, instantly, Dragon Tail's done. At the same time, Tiger just moves over towards the back lines. Commits for the bonus strike. GH is forced to shoot from over very deep. They can easily keep themselves out of range. They do get the cool control on the Tiger. They take down Tiger. Miracle's trying to fight against this, but Mickey with the Basher, with the Abyssal, he's just bashing him up, controlling Miracle through the BKB. As Miracle's down for a minute, no buyback. Kuro will be soon to fall. And Liquid, they can just start taking the base. They've got the creeps moving in on the bottom. Backdoor protection comes down. We are trying to clean them out. Push back these waves. But it's only down to him and GH, and it, it really does feel like that. just the last 10 minutes of this game, it's, it's just been a walk in the park for Liquid's lineup. Yeah, the pace of this game was absolutely nuts from both teams. And uh, I, I, it was definitely the threshold where either the Liquid cores are burstable and they can't play the map, in which case they're going to be inefficient and they're going to fall behind where the liquid cores are unkillable and they can play all three lanes. That was kind of the story of this game and it went in Liquid's favor. Uh, I think both teams made a lot of good moves, but at the end of the day, like just a few things where Mickey doesn't quite get brought down top, these these momentum swings and these type of matchups where it's like, can you kill us full to zero or not are all are gonna completely decide the game and Liquid looks like they're gonna completely run away with it as uh, they now run away after killing Two lanes of barracks. 21k here at 28 minutes in. I mean, the thing is, when you sort of look at the game now, like, how one-sided was the draft? Like, what could have played out differently for, for Nygma to to have not got to this uh, against Liquid. I don't think it's like a one-sided draft. If you no. look at the net worth, it's not like uh, this. Oh, are we okay. They don't even give us a second here. Oh, Tiger. He's up on the cliff. He's starting to burn him down with the summer. Kuro is already dead to the side. We are. Gets him on the back lines. Coil down onto Boxy. Yeah, he's popping the egg. Tiger's still stuck. He's slowly burning up on this cliff. So they will get Tiger. 
Meanwhile, Mickey <laughs> has got himself a DD and uh, and he kills off Weehaw. Weehaw's gone. Yeah, if you look at the net worth charts, this game was completely even at 15 minutes. Yeah. They've accrued all of this 22k net worth lead in the last 13 minutes. So it's just a matter of those mid-game skirmishes where it's it, it, who comes out on top. Like it, it, that 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 was all it was. Because the thing is, once you kill Bristle like two or three times in the mid-game, it becomes easier and easier to kill him. And same with Dragon Knight. But if you struggle to kill them, it becomes even more and more difficult to kill them. And that's exactly what you're seeing in network charts as well as the way this game's played out. As Nigma, I like how they're giving their final stand here. They're not gonna go down without a fight. And let's try it. Miracle. Oh, his BKP ends as he walks into the arrow! No, he's dead for sure. As he runs straight into it, takes it head first. The arrow from Boxy as he's down and out. Koi Fur just killing them outside of the fountain. As there's no defense that Nigma can put together here. Liquid is looking to close up this game one, and they'll do so. GG is called. And Liquid, as you say, just mid-game onwards, just on complete fire. And really nothing that Nigma could do whatsoever to slow them down, as Liquid just snowballed completely out of control uh, for, for the second half of that game.